Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Quite a warm day here in Adelaide today. But I've got the aircon going in here, so that's that's fine. I thought I'd, today I haven't done too many book reviews on this channel. I've done them on my blog, and I'm going to just uh, put a link on below this video after I finished it to a book review I've done already on my blog back about, I don't know, nine years ago now maybe I'm not sure how long ago I did it however um, the novel <coughs> excuse me it's a, uh, a novel by Simpson Newland and it's called Paving the Way and in my opinion it's one of the um, finest historical romantic novels ever written by an Australian author and about Australia uh, notwithstanding there are probably some good modern writers that write similar things but this I'll, I'll read the um, the author's um, preface to it in a moment to give you some idea of what it what it's about, and I'll read an extract from it. But I'll put the link to the um, to the uh, blog review I've done of this book some time ago, and there'll be a few photographs there that give you some idea of the terrain we're talking about. The setting of the book is in Encounter Bay down at um, near Victor Harbour in South Australia, a popular tourist area and also the Darling River and New South Wales cattle stations. Um, so I'm just going to read a little bit of the, the introduction, the preface by the author, and then I'll read an extract. And don't forget to follow the links below afterwards to see some photographs that I've taken in that area to give you some idea of the area where the, the novel was set. So um, here we go. This is the book, Paving the Way. I've got a marker in there where I'm going to read from by Simpson Newland. It's interesting that a few years back, or a couple of years back, I was down at Victor Harbour and I went into the um, information centre there and I wanted to know if anyone had any copies, I could buy some extra copies because I like to lend this book out to people. And uh, these dear old ladies who were doing voluntary work in the, inter in the um, information centre, they had no idea what the book was about and I said, this is the definitive book <laughs> that introduces people to Australia and living and particularly the life in Encounter Bay in the early days. Anyway, they didn't know about it. So by doing these reviews and this video, I'm hoping to introduce people to it. It's it's one of those books that I started when I was about 12, I suppose. I never ever got to finish it then, but I have since finished it right to the end. And it's as an adult, it's a book some people find hard to put down. So... Let's find the introduction. It's called A Romance, Paving the Way, A Romance of the Australian Bush by Simpson Newland. Simpson Newland actually ended up becoming a, a prominent politician in South Australia, South Australia's parliament, parliament. So here's the preface. As in a work on Australian pioneers, this was written in September 1893. As in a work on Australian pioneer life, such as this purports to be, it might be difficult to present bare facts in an acceptable form to the general public. My object had been, has been to blend truth and fiction in a connective narrative. That it partakes largely of a romance is certain, but the incidents, though so romantic, are mainly authentic. For these lives have been lived, and these deaths have been died. It is not alone on the familiar ground of the old world that heroic deeds have been performed or suffering nobly endured. To particularise too closely would not add interest to the story for the public, though it might in the opinion of those acquainted with many of the occurrences alluded to or more or less related, I have endeavoured to wound as few susceptibilities and tread on as few toes as possible. The time has not yet arrived in the life of Australia when the historian or novelist can write with an untrammeled pen. That's true. Everything is politically correct these days. I often thought that this would make a fantastic movie, but I don't think you'd get past all the political correctness that's required. It's interesting, just an interesting aside, I uh, have got to know a lot of people who are residents of a, a nursing home, and one of my good friends there who's in her 90s there's a the heroine of this novel is called Petrel, after Petrel Cove down that way, or the the cove was named after her, and it turns out that this lady um, is a long-standing resident from Encounter Bay, and she said the uh, 
the girl who this story is based on uh, was a relative, uh, a, um, a descendant of theirs, or um, a way back relative of, of her family. And, uh, and so it's based on a real person, and it's often thought, it's been said that the guy who wrote this story, he's actually the hero, the hero of the story himself. It's a lot about his own life as well. The colourful life he led. So that's a little bit of the preface. I'll just read that. It starts off with a shipwreck. The first chapter is the shipwreck. That's where it all starts. Um, including, I'll, I'll read here, this is about on board before the, before the shipwreck. And the boy being mentioned here actually becomes the hero of, of the story. Including crew and passengers, the Mary, that's the name of the ship, carried some 50 souls, many of them weary of the long voyage they were coming out from England and eager to see the land of their adoption. Old at starting, her timbers were considerably strained by the rough weather, weather they had met with on the voyage, and this caused the master to view with some trepidation the tempestuous weather now threatening. Brave and skilful sailor as he was, his experience told him that their position was fraught with peril. A dangerous coast to leeward with no safe harbour for many miles, an unseaworthy ship carrying 50 humans being dependent upon him for safety, and a furious hurricane about to burst upon them. Such was the situation he had to face. The boy had gone below with his mother. His mother was not well. I think she might have been expecting a baby. I'm not sure. I can't remember. And most of the other passengers had followed his example, leaving the sailors to combat the advancing storm as best they could. In a few minutes more it came, a blinding flash of lightning, accompanied rather than followed by an awful crash of thunder and a tempest of wind and rain. Thrown over on her side it seemed as if the vessel would never right again. Then slowly denuded of all her upper gear, with masts broken off a few feet from the deck, <coughs> and all the boats gone she recovered and drove on, a helpless wreck. With the instinct of a true sailor, the captain had held on to the wheel, and now with the assistance of a stalwart seaman, endeavoured to keep her before the wind. The mate and half the men had gone overboard at the first shock. The others crept up from the shattered bullocks, bruised and half drowned, and clung to the stumps of the mast for support against the seas that swept the deck. The blackness of darkness enveloped them in a mantle no sight could penetrate. But though helpless and continually drenched by the waves breaking over the ship, the brave men stuck to their post, ever hoping that abatement of the storm would allow them to gain some control over the wreck. When morning broke, its greatest violence seemed over, and the master ventured below. He then found his worst fears verified. The strained timbers had parted, and there were already several feet of water in the hold. From the nature of the cargo, he did not anticipate the brig would sink, yet it was evident that the passengers would be driven on deck. Shelterless, with the tempest still raging, what a prospect for the woman and the women and the boy. Warning them all that in the course of a few hours at most they must leave their present retreat, he urged them to eat a good meal of whatever was to be had, and provide themselves with all the warm clothing available. I'd like you to read you the whole lot, but you can actually, there'll be a link on my earlier blog about it, that takes you through where you can read the whole book online, I think. So that would be a bonus for you if you like these sort of historical novels. Uh, I can assure you that the, the waves that they're in there on the Coorong, um, which is to the east of Encounter Bay, uh, are very fierce and strong. Um, it's the Southern Ocean coming in there, and uh, they have a huge swell. And I've been out in a boat one day um, further around the coast than that, and uh, in Victoria actually, and we were on a boat, and I was terrified because of the huge swell. We were on a big fishing boat, and you all the time you were surfing on these 30, 40 foot high waves and the swell out in the ocean and that's the sort of weather and the waves crashing in you can get at Encounter Bay. So it's an enthralling story. Follow the links, have a look at some of the photos that um, you can uh, see on my blog, there'll be the link there, and enjoy it. So there you are, a book review of Paving the Way, thoroughly recommended. The, the other one that I was going to mention which is one of my favourite Australian novels, is called um, Robbery Under Arms by Rolf Bod Boulderwood, which was set in the same era as this is, because this is, includes uh, bush ranging and all sorts of things like that. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. 
See you later.